Hello friends, this video on evolution part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Origin of life, evolution of life forms, a theory, what are the evidences for evolution, what is adaptive radiation, biological evolution, mechanism of evolution, Hardy-Winberg principle, a brief account of evolution and origin and evolution of man. Now as the name says evolution. So here we are going to talk about how did all the living organisms evolve. Evolve means how did they originate. So today we see a wide variety of life forms around us, be it plants or animals. So each of them have got a huge variety, starting from tiny bacteria to the huge organisms like elephants or the aquatic animals like whales or the big trees. So irrespective of their uh, varied sizes, irrespective of their varied behavior and varied shapes, uh, we see that so many of them have actually evolved and grown. So here we are going to talk about the story of evolution. So it is actually like a story. So where we see so many different life forms and then we suddenly get to know that all of them have got a common ancestor. So that sounds so surprising, right? That how can a tiny bacteria or how can a, a tiny mosquito and a huge elephant, both of them can share a common ancestor. How is that possible? So it sounds unbelievable, but yes, that is true. So that is what we are going to talk about in this lesson where we'll see how different organisms started to evolve and how so much of variation or so much of diversity came into picture. So it is the story of development of variety of life forms over a long period of time. But of course, when I say that so many things came from one common ancestor, so it obviously means that it would have taken a really, really long, long time. So when I say a long time, it, it is in terms of billions and billions years ago. So that long of that much of time it took for this much of development to take place. Now, not only these life forms, in fact, if you look at ourselves, if you look at human beings, even they have evolved from a very different kind of organism. And that is why to say that apes and human beings, they all share a common ancestor. There are a lot of similarities between a human being and an ape. So uh, we will talk about all that in detail. So. So that, that's the agenda of this lesson. So we will talk about how different organisms originated. So what is evolution? It is the change in the inherited characteristics of biological populations over successive generations. Now a very common thing that would come to your mind after that you have studied genetics that in genetics we saw that with each generation the new offsprings get some of their traits from the parents but at the same time they tend to get some new trend new traits which were not present in either of their parents and how do they get those kind of new traits by the concept of recombination okay so uh, with this in mind we know that how small small changes come into picture with each generation so what happens in evolution is that the inherited traits, the traits which are coming on from one generation to the next and so on. So even in the traits which are coming in each generation, they are showing relatively small changes. And those changes over multiple generations, over say hundreds or 200 generations, those small, small changes when gathered together become a big change. And that big change sometimes become a new organism altogether. For example, if I say that, okay, the father and the mother, both of them had black hair and when a baby was born, the baby had brown hair. So this change might look very small to us because it is actually a very small change. But now, if many such small, small changes keep taking place with each generation, maybe the next generation. So that means when that baby grown up and gave birth to his or her baby, so then it was seen that they, that uh, kid had brown hair and on top of the brown hair it also had a new feature that was blue eyes 
So now if you compare that baby with the grandparents, you will see that they have got two differences. One is the hair color and also the eye color. So now if these kind of small changes keep happening over 100 generations and then if you compare the baby which is born in the 100th generation with the first generation parents, then you will see a huge difference between the two. So that is how small, small changes over successive generation can actually bring about a very big change. And this sometimes even gives rise to new organisms. It also gives rise to new species. So here we will see that, that how that exact change is taking place. So it is a very gradual process, of course, and that is why it takes so much of a long time. So it is a very gradual process in which something changes into a different and usually more complex or better form. So it has been observed that whatever change takes place, it always becomes more complex. So it has been seen that over a period of time, the organisms are getting transformed from simple to complex. So that is why there is a thought that all the simple organisms now as far as anatomy is concerned which organisms would you think that would are like the simplest organisms in terms of their structure and all the unicellular organisms correct because they just have one cell now one organism is having just one cell that one cell is doing all the jobs for that organism there's another organ organism which has multiple of cells and each of them is behaving in a different way so which is more complex obviously the multicellular one so it has been seen that these simpler organisms were the ones which existed before and then gradually from those simple organisms complex organisms started existing so this is a very gradual process where this simple form get, gradually gets transformed into a more complex form. So if you look at an example of the different varieties of dogs which you see these days. So if you see that people who domesticate dogs, I mean which, which who have dogs as their pets, you'll see so many varieties. Some of them will be all furry with white fur all over their body. Some of them will, have, will be very small in size. Some will be like very huge. Sometimes they don't even look like a dog. They look like a tiger or something. It, it is so huge actually. Some of them will have long ears. Some will be not at all furry so no fur on their body very less fur on their body so some of them will have a big mouth some will have a very small mouth so there are so many differences between the different types of dogs which you see however all of them are dogs now there is a possibility that sometimes the different looking organisms belong to the same species so maybe many of these I mean, when I say something belongs to a species, that means they are all the organisms which are under one species, they will be able to reproduce with each other. So they can mate with each other. So now it has been seen that sometimes the changes are so much that they don't even belong to the same species. They actually start giving rise to new species formation as well. So here looking at this picture of the varieties of dogs, you can actually see that how small small changes can take place and uh, it can give rise to differences and these differences later can actually give rise to new species. Evolution is a continuous process. It doesn't stop. It has started long, long time back and it is continuing even today. So even today, even though we feel that, okay, we are human beings, we are homo sapiens and like we have been evolved from a lot of other um, ancestors, but now nobody is going to be evolved from us. So that is not the case. Even we are changing. We are undergoing continuous change. When I say we, I mean to the species of human beings, the species, the entire homo sapiens so that is also undergoing change even now so when you actually compare a human being say from uh, some some thousands of years from now the way that person will look and the way a person used to look thousand years back there will be a huge difference between the two and that is nothing but a result of evolution so it is a slow process a gradual process but continuous and in this process most of the time simpler things become more complex now, as I said, the, a very important thing when we talk about evolution is that continuous small changes over a long time can cause big change. So this 
proves out to be a very important statement that when small small changes are taking place in uh, each generation so when that those changes keep happening continuously it shouldn't happen that okay for two three generations some changes came up but after that there are no changes so i'm not talking about those scenarios so scenarios where every generation some or the other thing is changing so if if small small changes keep happening over a long period of time so the, those small changes actually result to a bigger change now please remember this because this is a basic fact about the entire concept of evolution so this is the basis on which the entire uh, system of evolution works now i will give you a very common example from our day to day life and we will try to relate it to the statement that how this statement holds true so for that i will take the example of a very common and a very popular game which all of us might have played during our childhood and that is called as the chinese whispers so where you whisper something into your friend's ear and then your friends whisper the same thing into the next person's ear and the process goes on and then we check that how much the last person got it right because when you actually communicate from one person to another so small small changes keep happening because somebody has used it in a different way so let us take that example that of china's whispers game so here what happens you have quite a few people maybe a group of 10 or a group of 20 so the more the number of people uh, the more fun it is in the game so when you have a, a multiple people and let us suppose we start with this guy So here with this example, you will see that how something can change as it moves from one person to another. So here in this game, what happens is the first person. So let us suppose here in this case that the game starts from this guy. So this guy whispers something into this guy's ear. And then this guy in turn whispers the same thing into the third person's ear and then this continues and when it reaches the last person, this person has to speak up whatever has been whispered by this person. So now then it is matched whatever he had told and whatever he has listened. How much difference has come up since it passed on from so many on? through so many people so the same thing happens with each generation there is a small small change so here each step or each person is like one generation so every generation you will have small small change but over a long period of time over multiple generations those small small change will accumulate together to form a bigger change so here let us take an example let us suppose this person whispers into this person's ear that he wants a black car so this is the sentence that he whispers now what happens to the second person he listens it correctly and he says that okay it is he wants a black car so he whispers the same thing into the third person's ear this person hears it as he was a black car so instead of wants he hears is that was so if you see wants and was it doesn't have a lot of difference as far as the alphabets are considered but meaning wise it makes a lot of difference now when this person in turn whispers to the next person, he hears he was a black cat. So if you compare it with the first sentence, the meaning has changed altogether. For what he had intended to say was he wants a black car. Now it is he was a black cat. So it, there's a huge change. Now the next person hears it as he was a blank cat. And finally, the, what the last person gets to hear is he was a banker. So if you compare the last statement with the first statement, you see a huge difference. There is no match between the two sentences. They absolutely mean two different things. So in a very similar way, when small changes take place in each generation but if those changes keep on happening continuously over each generation then we find that over a long period of time when multiple generations have come up the differences are so huge that it is altogether a different species altogether and this is the basic funda of evolution because this is how evolution takes place this is how new species or new organisms evolve from existing organisms with small Small changes. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes, and take an online test. Thank you once again.